Hello and welcome to episode 25 of Crucible Bootcamp. I'm your host, King Koala, and today we're going to be looking, taking a look at some Trials play on Asylum by a Blade Dancer using the classic Last Word Sniper loadout. So let's go ahead and get into it. Notes here. So, Asylum's kind of an interesting map for trials because there's basically two 50-50s. The first 50-50, as you can see, our hero goes down into the first 50-50, which is by this this car. Uh, it's a little easier on this uh, from this spawn, uh, alpha spawn, as opposed to bravo spawn, just because you can use the car as a pseudo head glitch, which is really nice. But you want to have your sniper out earlier when you do get to the head glitch, and you want to try to slide into it. He jumps into it, which is good too. And you don't want to try to push out a cover. So he's going to go try to support his teammates. But unfortunately, uh, when you engage like this, uh, you want to make sure that you're pulling back into cover as you end the engagement. Which is good. So he does that. But because of the positioning on this particular map, he ends up being completely in the open. So he starts here. He moves here. And engages this way. So from this position... If anyone pushes down through mid-jungle onto the tree or up through atrium, he's going to be exposed. There isn't a great option for him to move back into cover just because of the way this, this angle is going to look. He really has to push all the way inside atrium in order to go back into cover or push towards the body around this pillar. So it's really important if you do go to the 50-50 that you know where your outs are. You can't just move straight back most of the time. Normally you have to move laterally. But he won his one, which is good. And really, when you win your one, all you need to do is communicate that to your teammates. Ideally before you even start firing, so they're collapsing on the orb altogether. Now because his teammates didn't collapse on the orb initially, they're just going to end up losing here because he's going to get a free res and they're going to push as a team and get surrounded. But initially, our hero, Carl Hungus, 23, made a very good play there. Did the right thing. So he's going to go back, back to the 50-50. He's going to change it up a little bit. He's not going to be right next to that car. He's going to go in front of the other two. I like this, but unfortunately, uh, he's not really close to very many of his teammates. So he gets the pick with team fire. He goes to prime someone with a grenade. Really nice priming uh, or pacing here. And based on his positioning of his teammates, they just basically crossfire as they're running away from his engagement. So that was a great round for his team as well. But again, we've, had, we've headed to the 50-50 twice now. It's important in trials that you mix up your opening. The more times you go to the same spot on trials, the easier it is for your opponents to react to what you're trying to do. So if you're always going to the 50-50 in the same way, Eventually, they're going to figure out, okay, if I just throw a grenade over there, he's going to be right there. I'm going to tag him, and he's going to need to move. And then I can basically roam free through that traffic lane that you were originally covering. Or you could potentially die just because maybe you get surrounded because they avoid your lane altogether, and you're too focused on hard scoping or something like that. It's good that when he does go to this 50-50, he changes the way he approaches it. I like to see that. But you don't want to go to the same spot three, three rounds in a row. And now that he's waited here for so long trying to search for people, his team's pushed out way far out in front of him. So now that he's getting pushed through railing, he has no option but to try to support his teammate. And if he was here to begin with, perhaps his teammate uh, wouldn't have died. And he engages out of cover. Again, searching for his target with his sniper rifle, which is not something you want to do. You notice that even when he's not scoped in, he's still searching for targets. Uh, you want to know where your target is going to be, and you just want to scope in and have them be there, basically. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, when you move somewhere, you should ha always have a place you should be looking. Um, go back to our acronym of TAR, think, act, react. So we think that our opponent is going to go off spawn into the 50-50, right? So our counter move is to go to the 50-50 first and hard scope down the lane. That's, that's all fine and dandy, but what if they don't show up there? You can't wait for them to show up, because they know where you are. 
by knowing where you aren't. That's important to, to understand that if someone isn't where you think they're going to be, you have to decide, well, where can they be instead? So most maps are divided into three sections. There's a mid lane, and there's the top of the map, and the bottom of the map. So if we think about it that way, if they're not in the middle, they can only be in the top or the bottom. So you, then your next move just needs to be to decide, do I want to go cover the top of the map? Do I want to cover the bottom of the map? And normally you want to choose the side that has your teammates. So if your teammates push into Atrium like this, you just need to sweep in through Cafe because we always want to move through cover to get back to our teammates. We want to keep ourselves uh, exposed as little as possible. If we had gone through Cafe, that means if they are in top, in the top portion of the map, if they're on B, they're most likely looking down into Atrium which means that this push through jungle to try to get to our teammates is going to completely expose us in this section here because there's no cover. So something as simple as taking it a couple extra seconds to go around could potentially win you the round and not let it snowball. All right, so when I said earlier about him engaging out of cover, we're just gonna watch his approach. So he's behind cover now and he's gonna push towards the pillar. So this is good. We wanna be engaging through this little railing or right around it. Basically you want part of your vision to be obscured by the environment. That means that, that, means that part of your body is going to be covered when we're engaging. And when you scope in, you can see he's right here. So this is a good snipe. All you need to do here is either, you know, swipe diagonally down to try to get ahead or just strike straight down and we'll let him walk into your scope so you can get a body or line up for a headshot. You have plenty of time here. You're most likely going to get shot at, so you want to go for a quick body. As soon as you miss that first shot, you should be scoping out. Um, a good, good habit to get into is just assume that your first shot's going to hit in this mid distance here. This is relatively close. You can see he's firing on him with his primary. You want to scope out and pull back into cover. Uh, ideally, when you take the shot, you already want to be moving back into cover completely. That way you're ready for, you know, whatever comes next. Or you can move out of the way for if someone tries to grenade you. There are a lot of things that can happen. But if you miss your first shot, you don't want normally want to try to go for a second shot. You just want to reposition. As a blade dancer, running blink in this case, it's really easy. All you need to do is blink away. Most of the time, people aren't going to hit you. You're going to get disoriented by blink. So he ends up blinking a little bit too late there, just trying to help his teammate out. But, I mean, his teammate was supporting him there, and that's what your engagement should look like in Trials. You should be close enough to your teammates to not necessarily get multi-grenaded, but close enough that they can support any, any firefight that you end up getting in. So right now he's just covering, but he's covering from out of cover. Again, you want to be hugging either one of those walls on, the, on either side. You want to be hugging over here... Or you want to be hugging this wall here. So we always want to be undercover when we're engaging. So this round is, this next round coming up is a textbook of what you want your trials rounds to look like when you play as a team. So what, what they're going to do is they're going to push right up into, bo into B. I'm going to push all the way through to boxes. So he's going to do a slide here, which is really nice. And he's going to get a body shot. That's all you really need to do. He didn't need to make any fancy plays or try to go for, for a headshot. He knew where his teammates were, and they're just swarming to cover this angle. And now that one's two are down, you can see they're just going to push in as a team to try to finish the third. And he primes him with a grenade that ends up finishing him off. So he got, he got shot as he tried to cross to get a new angle. But that's what you want your trials rounds to look like. No one made a huge play there. No one made like a montage play or some flashy clip. There was no flank. It was just good old bread and butter team firing. And that's all you really need to do. You just need to be close enough to your teammate and listen to what they're saying to know exactly where your opponents are and just hit them once or twice. You don't need to actually, you know, kill them from zero to go from 100 to zero. You can just take them from... 150 and then let your teammates finish them off. You don't need to be a hero in trials. The whole point is it's an incredibly intense team match. 
And yeah, some people can carry. Some people are smart enough or good enough that they can 1v3 all the time. But for your average player, if you're going to be successful is if all you do is hit one or two shots on the same target as your buddy. Anyone can go flawless if, if all you do is stick together as a team and shoot the same target. Because most of the time, you're gonna, it's going to whittle down into those perfect 1v1 engagements. As long as you're confident in your ability and you're willing to push aggressively um, and smartly, you're going to win. Because what's going to happen is you're going to start in a 3v3 and you're going to team fire one guy down. So now it's a 3v2 and one of you is probably weak from the firefight, but you're going to keep fighting. So it'll go down to a 2v2, but then the second person on their team will be weak. So then it'll be a 2v1. And then maybe they get down to a 1v1, and then hopefully your guy is more healthier than their guy, and you just land your shots. That's how an ideal 3v3 engagement will work. Um, trials, you can either do that, or if you're confident in your ability to properly disengage, you can do 2-1 splits, where two people team fire, and one person flanks. And so the important thing is when you flank, uh, you need to know when you need to push in and apply pressure and your teammates need to follow to pincer them or you need to know when to pull out and be a distraction because then your teammates can cover ground and move in and base and and uh put again put pressure on your or on the enemy team the whole time you want the enemy team to feel uncomfortable you don't want them to feel like they can line up shots or like they have time to set up a sniper lane or anything like that you want to constantly be priming them with grenades you want to be constantly getting in their face and you want to make them you want to force them to make plays while you play the game at your pace. Even if that means you just control the middle of the map and say, hey, come and get me, that's fine. But decide as a team how you're going to play out the map. So heavy round. Heavy round, in, if you're going to run to the 50-50 in heavy round, and this is a 50-50. They, they change in heavy rounds just because everyone's going to the same spot. Um, as opposed to in the normal round when everyone's just trying to get to the center of the map for map control. Um, keep in mind, when you do, do go to these 50-50s, you need to treat them just like you would any other. You need to be jumping or sliding or just avoiding them altogether. Um, it's okay to avoid a 50-50 and just deal with the same angle from a different location. So... He just kind of misses his shots there. He makes a good one, uh, and his teammate is there supporting him. But in these situations, again, you don't need to go for necessarily need to go for headshots if your teammate is there. You can just be body shotting guys and let your teammate clean them up or finish them off. Or he'll hit somebody a couple times and you just finish them off with the body. If you're with teammates, you you don't need to make uh, low percentage plays like headshots. You can just hit someone in the body. There's, there's no shame in killing someone with a body shot. All right. So, spoilers. This is kind of where it goes all downhill. And personally, I think it's for one major reason, and that's he has a supercharged. And he has no special. So, two, two issues here. First of all, when you have your supercharged, and it's round, you know, in this case, it's round six. And the enemy team doesn't necessarily have uh, great su shutdown supers. You saw Titan, but he's running Sunbreaker, um, which you can kill if you're close enough when you pop your blade. And also, they aren't very far ahead at all. It, your rounds haven't really taken all that long. So maybe they have one super up, but most likely they don't. You need to aggressively use your supers early, especially if you have a lead like this in Trials. Uh, you can pop three if you need to to finish the game out. But the whole point is, use that snowball to your advantage before you and and don't let your team don't don't let the enemy team catch up. Um, and then the other issue is know how much special you have left. If you don't have any left, you should never be going to the 50/50 because, uh, especially if it's a sniper lane, if it's a 50/50 like shotgun lane, which don't come come up very often, but occasionally they do. Um, don't go there without either a last bird or having shotgun ammo yourself. Know how you need to maneuver in order to create an engagement where you're going to be successful. If he had gone to that 50-50 and someone was actually there, he would have died because he had no way of challenging that person without a long-range primary. 
So really good pacing there. He's going to go for a res, which is good. But in the case of a 1v1, that is your ideal situation for you to pop your super. And even in a 2v1, that's fine to pop your super too, especially if you're jumping into them and not really paying attention to you. Because right now it's 2v2. You're going to get that kill, and then the other guy's going to die here. So you don't need to get a res here. You can just finish them off right now. You need just push to cover orbs and pop your super. That's all you need to do. If you are going to go for res, as soon as you get them up, pop your super. Because there's going to be two guys that coming at you now. And they're going to be distracted by the orb. If you're going to make this kind of play with your super up, you're using your teammate as bait. Um, which is fine. Use your teammate as bait. But you need to convert on it. Um, if they get a kill for free here, that's worse because you're charging their super. If he had just popped his super in that particular instance... He would have killed both of them. Even if the guy had a self-res, he's got a self-res almost immediately, and you can hit him twice with your arc blade. You're not going to immediately die to a melee. Not in super. So... Again, you still have your super up. If you're going to go underneath, just pop it as soon as someone shows on your, on your screen. Your teammate pops super, just pop it with him. The one thing you don't want to do if your teammate pops super is take the obvious lane. Um, especially if it's going to expose you to the, the, to the long lane. So this jump up here is fine, but you need to be behind the box. Or you need to immediately push into ticket booth, so you need to angle it differently. Um, if you come up from B stairs, you want to either end up behind the box, or you want to end up behind balcony and immediately move. You don't want to stay in this lane, especially if um, your teammate has popped a roaming super like arc blade, because most players are going to back off to try to pull you through choke points, so you can get shots on that person, right? So if you pop it here, the team is going to back up to their spawn. And when they do that, you know they're all going to be in boxes. That's your opportunity to just go back and swarm around. The power of a super isn't in the kills that you get as a teammate of, of someone who where your teammate uh, pops their super. The power Your job is to swarm and to surround. And to use that super as a distraction. Because if this team stands their ground, you get a free flank all the way through um, their spawn to grass. And you can go up bay, or you can just stay out here on on, uh, on grass, or bat on back sea if you're a sniper, or just come up on, on the steps if you're, uh, if you're a shotgunner. And just hit them from two sides. If you're hitting them from two sides, what are they going to do? Where are they going to go if you're hitting them from bay? And, you're, and they're, your super is coming in through the front door boxes. They have nowhere to go, and they need to either super or team fire their way out. And if they team fire the, the super, it's going to take them longer because of the super, um, the super damage reduction. And you're going to be able to kill at least one person here and create a 1v1 trade. And then your, your other teammate should either be with you or pushing with, your super, with the super popped as well. So again, the pincer is still here. The most dangerous thing is if you're pushing into shotgunners. That's all you need to keep track of. Nothing fancy there. It's not, it's not a hugely uh, difficult, coordinated play to make. But just know your role if you're not going to pop your super as well. In the case of if you have arc blade and you get hit by hammer, you can't push into the hammer because it takes two to kill you or one sun charge. Uh, most of the time that I see a hammer, if I pop blade, and I don't play hunter very often, but uh, if you do pop blade and you see a hammer, you normally want to back off of it and just trade super for super. You don't. It doesn't necessarily need to end in a kill. And you have this orb out here. As long as you turn it into a stalemate, you're going to end up with three guys up in just a second as soon as the super runs out. And if he pushes out, you can team fire him. But if you push in like that, like his teammate did, uh, it's almost always going to end like that, especially if they're running Sun Charge. Sun Charge kills every super. Uh, so again, we have no special. We don't want to be going to the 50-50. We either need to be playing for green, and you can tell your teammates that. But you don't want to push into the middle of the lane where you can't defend yourself. He's going to take the obvious route to escape. 
but not be close to his teammates. So he's going to get... Uh, he, he doesn't go into cover. He's pushing back out through the middle of the lane. So this escape is good. He's essentially gotten away at this point. If you're going to go up into B, you need to hide behind a pillar. Not pull back out. You want to stay behind that pillar and let your teammates come to you or figure out how you're going to cross to get to them. What you don't want to do is pull out of cover into where you're going to be exposed by the guys that were just chasing after you and let yourself get killed. He'll do his best, but his teammate ends up getting surrounded. Finished off. All right, so now we've held on to our super for an additional three rounds. This is going into our fourth round of holding our super. We absolutely need to use it. You do not want to die and finish a game with your super still up. I would. You want it, You you should be dying using your super. Um, than dying before you get a chance to. As soon as someone pops up on your radar like this, just pop it and go in. He just gets double fire bolted and then proceeds to get teabagged because, as is tradition in trials, people are awful. Don't need to see that. So, some real, I mean, some real basic takeaways. Um, you need to practice different approaches. For trials you should never be going to the same spot twice in a row and you should never approach that spot when you do finally return to it in the same way you don't want to give your enemy an opportunity to adjust to what you're trying to do so if round one you decide you're gonna go to the truck for 50 50 or the car uh, round two you know go into atrium round three go up into B maybe you choose to go into ninja maybe round four um, for heavy round you decide you're just going to cover someone that decides to push you from out here, or maybe from behind car. And for the final round, let's say you go up 4-0, then you decide you're just going to push straight through with your, uh, with your super. You don't need to do anything fancy. You don't need to make any huge plays. You just need to mix up your approaches. This is also going to teach you all the different lanes on the map and how to approach them, which will not only help you for trials and future matches, but it'll help you in threes or rumble as well. Because if you have never gone to Ninja or Backdoors, it's uh, called out on this map, if you've never gone here, then you don't know that there's a really nice angle that you have across here. You don't know that there's an angle that's over you can cover over here by boxes. You also don't know that if you if you never go to Ninja and looked at where you can get attacked from, if you spawn on the other side, you know exactly where to look. This works two ways. As long as you keep track and remember what it looked like uh, to kill the guy on the one side, and then remember, okay, you know, I killed the guy over there, so if I get there first, I know where I should be looking. Um... So when you lose when you lose out on special, and the game is very special centric nowadays, uh, remember that there are certain things you can no longer do if you don't have special, um, and you have to rely on your primary. And if you're uncomfortable using your primary, then I highly suggest you go a few games only using your primary, so you really understand when it's useful. Um, the last word is an incredibly versatile gun because it can basically function like a pseudo shotgun it's very good at pushing people with your teammates um, because you, you have to be close which means that you're gonna if they're a shotgunner then all you got to do is hit the the guy you're gonna that they're shotgunning a couple times and their shotgun range is going to go up a lot their one hit range because they don't have to hit as many pellets they don't have to be as close maybe they can just finish with a storm collar melee instead um, all these things uh, being a good teammate is just about calling out targets Trusting your teammates and hitting the right, same target. Um, and finally, don't hold your super. Um, unless it's a shutdown super. And if it's a shutdown super, then uh, have a good idea of what your opponent, like what you really need to shut down. And so I play a striker. And Striker Titan has arguably the best shutdown super in the game, right? Fist of Havoc. Especially if you combine it with Death from Above because it basically becomes almost impossible to dodge. Um, if you do that, 
and it's say you know you're up 4-0 think about what the enemy team has say you're hold, you want to hold it for storm but you know storm is either not up at all or it won't be up till next round so you're up 4-0 if you can just kill the storm this round with your smash you don't need to worry about shutting down a super he's already dead um also if you're running on a team that has other shutdown supers you can use yours and just rely on them to shut down the super um, so if you're running with an, a void walker or you're running with a golden gun maybe you're running with sun charge uh, all these supers are really good at shutting down enemy supers um, roaming supers like arc blade like stormcaller like um, sun singer if you can rely on your teammates to cover the fact for the fact that you don't have a shutdown super then you should just use it um, and not only that if you if you have, say, two shutdown supers and a roaming super, the roaming super normally takes longer to charge. So you getting that orb out for them is the most important thing because it's going to cut down the time on their own, their, their own super. So for whatever reason, you lose that round, you go down 4-1, your roaming super should likely have their uh, theirs up as long as they pick up the orb. So it's not just about getting a kill it's also about supporting your teammates so that if you do happen to fail that particular round it isn't all lost uh, the longer you wait on your super the less effective that orb is going to be because by the time you finally use it they could already have their supercharge and they could be waiting for the same thing so use them early use them often um yeah i mean short pretty short episode today pretty self-explanatory uh next week we will be having a uh skirmish match from a void walker using my shotgun on time uh timekeeper so keep an eye out for that i'm trying to rotate between game modes so we did a rumble last time we're doing trials this time we're gonna do threes next time um if you have any gameplay you want to submit to me again uh if you've watched for a while now you know the deal it's Threes, Rumble, or Trials, or Elimination. Send it to Keenick at CrucibleBootCamp.com and goes in my queue, just like this one. When it gets picked, I'll email you and let you know when it's up. Um, if you want to support the show, as always, you can donate or you can go become a Patreon backer. There's lots of backings. Um, short announcement about backers. I'm going to be giving out the September awards, announcing it next uh, on Thursday. So I'm going to be giving away... Uh, a Union of Light code, which is the emblem from PAX, and I also have this neat little storm caller, the little uh, Mega Bloks one. So those will be going to the Patreon backers for this month. I have more storm callers and uh, to give away, and also a couple items of clothing and some posters. So those will be coming for future months. But for now, that's what's up for this month. Um, if you win and I announce your name, I'll email you, let you know and you know get your information for shipping or whatever to get that stuff out to you guys but thank you guys for watching uh as always i've been your host king koala and class is dismissed <laughs>